For some reason, there are certain creature features and monster movies and horror films in general which seem to get bandwagoned for weird, unknown reasons, at least reasons which, to me, don't make much sense. This is one such movie, and another movie which I would also put in that camp is Leviathan. These are movies which, for no apparent reason, get very bad scores from critics and negative things are often said about them, and it also becomes popular just to dislike the movie for the sake of it. Now, there are plenty of movies which I actually like that a lot of people find it fun to dislike just because people do. As an example, I really love elements of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I view it as a steampunk version of the Avengers. You've got Hulk in there, you've got Iron Man in effect leading the team, and various other elements of popular Marvel films. But it's fun to dislike the movie for various cheesy reasons. Likewise with Leviathan. Leviathan is a genuine rival to movies like Alien and The Thing but for whatever reason it has a ridiculously low score on numerous sites online, and this is another such occasion. Now Relic is a movie which I saw years ago, and I didn't pay it that much attention. I might have seen bits of it here or there, but never watched the full thing. I was probably a kid and didn't appreciate it. Because this is very much so a monster movie, but it's a monster movie which very deliberately takes its time. Because some of the minds and characters and actors involved are a much higher par than you would typically get in a, in effect, B-movie. Because that is what Relic is. It's a B-movie, as I've said before, and as many people have said, a B-movie done A. When you take a concept which is inherently silly, but then give it more of a polished edge. Not to say, of course, that you're trying to win an Oscar with the film, but at the same time, 95% of horror films do not come up to the par of these particular movies, and I would most definitely put The Relic in that camp. Now, is this one of my absolute favourite monster films? Well, in a way, yes. I wouldn't necessarily put it in my top 10, but it wouldn't be far out of that. It might be somewhere around 12 or 13, just off the top of my head, because it does have that kind of potential. And what I also love about Relic is how different it is, genuinely different, to many other monster movies. Because without spoiling anything too specific, most monster movies or alien movies follow very similar tropes. It either comes from under the ground or out in space, crashes into Earth or burrows out from the Earth and attacks people because it can. It's usually in some remote location that people inexplicably don't get cell service at and all that kind of usual nonsense. Now I'm not saying that this movie doesn't do those kind of tropes, but it presents it in a way which does feel genuinely unique to itself. The location, for instance, the majority of the movie takes place in a museum. I love that, because a museum can be both on lockdown, for instance, so you can't get out, but at the same time, it's a big enough location to keep it interesting, to give you that kind of creepy maze-like feel, and it works well for this movie, not just as a setting, but also it is very definitely intrinsic to the plot. Then you've got stuff like the creature, not just how good it looks, but how to use it. Something like Jaws, for instance. It's one of the highest rated movies I've ever reviewed, but if you just take every scene where you actually see the shark, it doesn't look that great by today's standards. The reason why it pulls it off so well is because of how it's used. Likewise here, the creature in this movie called the Kathoga, which is incidentally one of the most underappreciated monsters in any movie, is brilliantly used. You get to see it enough, but you also don't see it enough. And not just at the start of the film compared to the end, which is the typical method, you know, you hear it, you see the remnants of its attack, and then later on it's shown and you get a full reveal at the end of the movie. That's not done that way here. It's done out of sequence in some places, seeing a bit here and a bit more there and then a bit less later on, and I like that. It keeps it fresh, it keeps it different. Plus, the creature itself was designed by Stan Winston, developed by his creative team, and so it's going to be a pretty good creature. <laughs> of course it is. Many of the movies which I've reviewed, well not many, but quite a few of the movies which I've reviewed in this kind of genre, such as Creature last week, have that same stamp of approval from being part of the Stan Winston creative machine. And whenever you get that involvement, really, 
behind the monster or the creature in a film, you pretty much know that it's going to be a step above what most monster movies will be. Not just in terms of a creature design, which of course is very important, but even more so in terms of importance, how the creature is used and how it's carried out. Because CGI is not really something which his creative team likes to do. It's practical, it's suit or mask or puppet or animatronic based, and it's all the better for it. And I wouldn't even say that that's a product of its time, because even up until today, with more recent movies like the Babadook, or the most recent version of IT, those movies still go to show that those practical effects can have a strong impact. Even stuff like stop motion, which is used in IT, still works. It's still effective and creepy when used correctly. And I would say that it is used correctly for the most part, at least, in this film. Now, the essential plot isn't really something which I usually go into with my movies. I'll cover it in a basic sense, but that's not really the point of my reviews. And although I don't spoil movies when I talk about them, my reviews are kind of based around people who have seen the film and like to reminisce, or like to have their memory jogged. So, from that point of view, still without spoiling anything, the essential concept is there are some people who work at a museum, and of course they're always on the lookout for new, strange, weird and wonderful artefacts to draw in the crowds, and they're at a pivotal point for the museum's development. They want to get more backing, more big names behind them to get things expanded, to have better funding, all that kind of usual stuff. But at the same time, a certain relic, hence the name of the film, arrives. It's a relic which is shrouded in mystery, and then, as it develops, it's not necessarily a relic that you'd want to be around your museum. And it plays out from there as you'd probably assume, and in many ways, not how you would assume. And again, I like that. It's not as predictable a monster movie as many people would have you believe. And on a slight side note, but also related to the visual effects which I was speaking of earlier, another thing which I like about this movie is that it's not just the creature that looks good or is well thought out. The sets, the scenes, the camera work, even stuff like dead bodies, the cadavers, they all look good. And it shows much more than a lower budget film could out of necessity. And I love the fact that the minds, the creative control behind the film allow it to show more because the quality is higher. That's great, it means that you can get into the film more, your suspension of disbelief is much easier, and you can really get into that fun feel of a true monster movie. Albeit in this case, I would say a very undervalued one. Another thing that I will say though about the essential plot, and in particular the pacing around the plot, touching again on what I said earlier about not necessarily showing as much monster action as many films would, is that this is the kind of horror movie, and monster movie specifically, and we'll touch on this again later in the scores, that you really need to watch at least once, just on your own and it's not the most ideal of monster movies for a group watching. So in that way, it is, again, very different to many B-movies or creature features, because quite a few of them are perfect for group watching, because you can all sit there, laugh at how dumb it is, and have a lot of fun. That's not really the case here. It's a lot of dialogue, a lot of characters talking to each other, a lot of monster action, don't get me wrong, but a lot more important stuff is said in dialogue than you would typically expect in a monster film. Because let's face it, even those of us who are hardcore monster fans who will forgive anything, you've got to admit there are some monster movies and creature features which truly are trash. And the only reason why you watch it is for the creature. Everything else is completely useless. This isn't one of those films. The, the casting is good, the acting is good, the characters are interesting and it's developed well. So for one person watching the film, it can keep your attention well enough. For a group though, not so much, because there isn't quite enough silly over the top action all the time, because there is that, but not all the time, that really is necessitated for a group watching where you pretty much guarantee people are going to be talking to each other and talking over the film and missing stuff. This isn't really that kind of movie. However, that of course brings us to the scores. So what am I going to score Relic? 
Well, first of all, as always, we have the story and the plot. And more often than not, for these creature feature and monster movies, if it's a good one that I've reviewed, which they generally are, I don't review bad movies usually, I tend to give them a six because they are above par, but at the same time, nothing Oscar worthy. And that's going to be the case here as well. I am going to give it a 6 out of 10 because it definitely is above par, especially if you compare it to many of its siblings, both of the time and also now in the monster genre. There is so much trash that the relic is easily, easily better than 95% of horror movies out there, but even more so monster movies or creature features or B-movies. So yeah, it's, it's an easy 6. I feel like potentially giving it a 7, but at the same time, I think that might be a little bit too high. So I feel comfortable with the six overall. As far as the characters, the casting, the motivations, I'm gonna give it a seven for that. They're not the most likable or the most interesting characters around. You don't get a huge amount of backstory, but at the same time, the reason why I am giving it a very respectable seven it's because they're well cast, there are faces which you will doubtless recognise, not just from the era, but even before or after. They are interesting characters to the point where you do care what happens to them without needing to know everything about them. And although there are some dumb interactions or stupid mistakes and predictable things done by certain characters, such as security guards always being dummies in movies for no apparent reason, that kind of tropey stuff is still in there, but at the same time, it's no way near as bad as it often is. So for that, I have to respect the film and also praise it for that. As far as the visuals, the effects, of course, the creature itself, which is always going to be the crux of the score for a movie like this, well, I'm going to reflect that with a very high score. I'm going to give it a nine because I really like the visuals of the relic. It has that slightly dated style from when the movie came out, but in a good way. It almost has a not crime thriller but kind of a, a political intrigue kind of look to it the way people are dressed the locations the city atmosphere the music even it has that kind of law and order feel to it from the 90s or early 2000s and i think that suits this it sets it again apart from the rest of the crowd it's much more interesting than in the middle of a desert or stuck in a snowy location or out on a boat at sea not that there's anything wrong with those but there are so many movies which do that, that it makes this one stand out even more. As far as the creature, it's great. It's an interesting, wacky, weird, intimidating, very aggressive design. It looks like other things, but at the same time, if you try to actually pinpoint something else which looks like it, there isn't really anything. So that's a great testament to the creature. Now, as far as the soundtrack, the audio, the music in general, sound effects, sound design, I'm going to give it another six, like with the story, because the music is interesting but not overly memorable. The sound design in general is good enough. The creature sounds are pretty cool. But again, nothing Oscar worthy and not necessarily worthy of a seven. So again, I feel comfortable with a six for this one. Definitely above par for a horror film, but nothing mind blowing. And finally, for the rewatchability and entertainment, I'm going to actually give it a seven because it doesn't have the group rewatchability, but for you on your own, if you are a monster movie fan, yeah, it definitely has rewatchability. It's a good runtime, good characters, a great creature, and an interesting location, and that all works out pretty well when you put it together. At the same time though, I definitely feel that some people will probably disagree with this score more than all of the others because The Relic is one of those movies that some people will absolutely adore, and it will be one of their probably top five, up there with stuff like Splinter and The Thing and The Blob. For me personally, it's not quite that high, but at the same time, I'm giving it a seven because it definitely has rewatchability, but when I'm thinking about what monster movie I want to watch, this doesn't come to mind first, or even second or third. It's much lower down the line. So of course it's a very subjective score anyway, but that's just how it falls for me. I like it for what it is, but the rewatchability isn't quite as high as some others, and it really is as simple as that. It's not a bad score as far as the quality of the movie, it's just the pacing and the style lends itself towards watching it more occasionally rather than frequently. And I think it's good for that. 
But overall, as a tabulation of all five categories put together, I am giving The Relic a very respectable 3.5 out of 5, which works out to be a 70 out of 100 or a 7 out of 10 overall, which is pretty good. That's a pretty decent score and a lot higher than many other reviewers and sites will give this film. But that's often the case with my reviews of monster movies because you have to appreciate that kind of cinema. But at the same time, being a horror or a creature feature fan does come with the stigma that people think you automatically like trashy films. That's not the case for me, and I'm sure that's not the case for you guys in the most part anyway. Some people do truthfully like everything in the genre. I wouldn't go that far. I still want it to be a good film. But for me, that's why these ones, like The Relic and The Thing and Harbinger Down and various others, stand out so much, because they really are so far above and beyond what this genre will typically dump out <laughs> in the conveyor belt of movies. So overall, definitely check out The Relic if you haven't already done so. If you are a monster fan, a creature feature fan, a B-movie fan even, I think you'll like it. But it is different to many of the others in the genre. So overall, that's it for this particular pick, and I'll see you guys next time. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.